On the 18th of August 2017, at around 1 a.m. in the morning, a man named Brian Weinstein was murdered in his home in the wealthy suburb of Constantia, in the city of Cape Town. At the time of his death, Brian was in bed, alongside his two-year-old son and his wife, when two men wearing balaclavas entered their home. After entering the home, the two men went into Brian's bedroom, and they shot him five times in the neck, and he died instantly. His wife and two-year-old son, however, were not wounded during the shooting. After they were done, the two gunmen took seven cell phones belonging to Brian, and also 100 rands, before leaving the house. Before his gruesome death, Brian was fighting an extradition case into the United States. He was accused of selling steroids illegally, which were worth over 70 million rands, from 2004 to 2010. On the 19th of January 2014, three years before he was murdered, Brian was arrested by the South African Police Service at his luxury apartment at the Viande waterfront in Cape Town. It is said that he had been staying in Cape Town for only a few months before his arrest. The police were alerted to his presence in the country after an altercation took place between him and his neighbor. The neighbor had allegedly called the police and complained about Brian, who was playing loud music. Three days before this happened, the South African Police Service along with the United States Drug Enforcement Agency had issued a warrant of arrest in Pretoria for Brian. When the police officers arrived, they realized that it was Brian and they arrested him immediately. He was however released by the Cape Town Magistrates Court on a 500,000 rands bail after spending only three days in prison. The United States Embassy would be alerted to Brian's arrest by the South African police. According to the U.S. Embassy, Brian had a red notice on the Interpol's most wanted list. The red notice was a result of an outstanding warrant in the Middle District of Tennessee for drug-related crimes and forgery. It is alleged that Brian's name first appeared on the Interpol's most wanted list in February 2011. He was described as an Israeli citizen, however, it is said that he also had a South African citizenship, but his South African passport had expired in November 2004. An indictment by the United States prosecutors alleged that Brian was running an elaborate operation which allegedly made and distributed anabolic steroids through a company called Axio Labs. It said that Brian ran the drug distribution operation with his wife, Shaban Hatton, between December 2004 and November 2009. According to U.S. court papers, the couple had made a net profit of 76 million rands from the illegal business. Their enterprise was said to be sophisticated, extensive, and very much lucrative. Aside from his links to the United States, Brian was also being investigated by the South African Police Service for dealing in uncut diamonds. He was again arrested by the police in November 2016, a year before his death, when police stopped his black BMW 750, which had no number plates, as he was cruising around Cape Town. When police searched the car, they found at least 12 uncut diamonds in a bag which was next to him. He was supposed to appear in court a few days after his arrest, however he was released on something called a police bail the night before his appearance. On the 10th of October 2017, two months after the murder of Brian Weinstein, the Hawks, along with the South African Police Service, would start making breakthroughs in their investigation of the incident. A man named Fabian Cupido, who was a suspect, was arrested by the police in Cape Town. He was an alleged member of the 27's number gang, and had joined the gang after losing his job as a train driver, in 2015. On the 29th of November 2017, brothers Sheldon Breit and Matthew Breit would also be arrested by the police for the murder of Brian Weinstein. According to the state, the Breit brothers were Brian's personal bodyguards, while Sheldon Breit was also involved in Brian's business dealings. The Breit brothers would also face additional charges after further investigations done by the Hawks uncovered over 3,000 different kinds of ammunition, four illegal guns, four grenades, as well as two military hand radios inside a storage facility in Crawfontaine, a town in the Western Cape. According to the Hawks, this storage facility belonged to Sheldon Breit. On the 19th of February 2018, the Breit brothers, along with Fabian Cupido, appeared in the Winberg Magistrates Court for the murder of Brian Weinstein. More than a dozen police officers, some of them with masks covering their faces and carrying rifles, were stationed all around the court. As the court proceedings went underway, the state alleged that Cupido and the Breit brothers had discussed the possible assassination of Brian about a week before he died. On the day that Brian was killed, it's alleged that a meeting had taken place at a tire store in Cape Town. 
In that meeting, Sheldon Breed, Fabian Cupido, and also a man named Cheslin Adams, who was a 27's gang member, were present. They were allegedly conspiring to murder Brian. It was decided that Adams would enter the house and shoot Brian, while Cupido would serve as the driver of the vehicle, transporting the hitman. A Bantam Baki was originally planned to be used, but was swapped for a VW Golf GTI. The state also claimed that Fabian Cupido, Cheslin Adams, and the state witness went to Brian's home to scout it that evening. Later Cupido and Matthew Breit arranged for the vehicles to be swapped at the service road to the Century City train station. There, it is alleged that Matthew Breit told Cupido, Adams, and the state witness that Brian was to be killed, and he gave them a detailed layout of Brian's house using Google Maps. Matthew Breit also told them that the back door of the house would be unlocked and that the alarm and electric fence would not be activated. They were also allegedly instructed not to harm Brian's wife and his child, who were both home at that time. Fabian Cupido, Cheslin Adams and the state witness then returned to Brian's Constantia home and Adams entered through the back door while Cupido waited at the car. Adams and the state witness are alleged to have entered the main bedroom where Brian was sleeping and shot him five times in his neck. A few moments after the shooting occurred, Matthew and Sheldon Breed went to the scene of the shooting. While well, at the scene, the state alleges that Matthew was called by Cupido, who asked whether the mission was accomplished. Fabian Cupido was allegedly paid 25,000 rands for the murder. While all this was going on, Nafiz Madak, an alleged kingpin within the Cape Town underworld, and a man who is currently being charged for the murder of the great Charles Kinnear, an anti-gang unit detective, was facing serious charges of his own. On the 2nd of February 2018, Nafiz Madak had appeared at the Cape Town Magistrates Court. He was facing charges of extortion and intimidation, along with Colin Buisson, the brother of Jerome Buisson, the alleged leader of the Sexy Boys Gang, a Cape Town-based drug-dealing gang. Lieutenant Charles Kinnear was the investigating officer in this case. The men face one count of intimidation and eight of extortion relating to the alleged takeover of security at the Grand Africa Cafe and Beach last year. The investigating officer, Charles Kinnear, today also said that Modak and Kinnear would be charged in connection with the murder of a bouncer at Cubana in Greenpoint. He has testified that bail should be denied as both Modak and Kinnear are flight risks and would likely evade trial. But counsel for Modak says the state will not be able to convict his client on any intimidation charge. During Modak's court proceedings, his lawyer had played an audio recording, which was apparently made on the same day that Brian Weinstein was killed. In the recording, Brian is heard talking to an individual named Mark Liffman, a very controversial businessman from Cape Town. As the Brian Weinstein murder case went on, in December 2018, the first sentences would be handed down. Matthew Breit would eventually be found guilty, and he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Fabian Cupido was sentenced to an effective 25-year prison sentence, after he entered into a plea and sentencing agreement with the state. In June 2020, Sheldon Breit was also found guilty, and he was also sentenced to 25 years in prison, after taking a plea and sentencing deal. The arrest and sentencing of Fabian Cupido, along with the Breit brothers, would be a huge win for the South African police in their fight against crime in the Western Cape. However, as months went by, more people linked to the murder of Brian Weinstein would be arrested. And these arrests would reveal just how deep and deadly the Cape Town criminal underworld was. This was because these new arrests involved some of the most powerful businessmen and gang leaders who were terrorizing the city of Cape Town.
On the 12th of May 2021, controversial businessman Mark Liffman and the alleged leader of the Sexy Boys drug dealing gang, Jerome Buisson, alongside 13 of their friends, appeared at the Cape Town Magistrates Court. The group was facing at least 38 criminal charges, including the murder of Brian Weinstein, for which Liffman and Buisson were the main accused. The group was also facing five counts of conspiracy to commit murder, four counts of attempted murder, three counts of incitement to commit murder, four counts of intimidation and corruption, and also several counts of violating the Prevention of Organized Crime Act. Businessman, bouncers, a PI, a police officer, an alleged steroid drug dealer and members of the 27's gang face a variety of charges relating to gang activity, murder, conspiracy to commit murder, money laundering and possession of illegal guns and ammunition. The state laid bare the battle for turf involving lucrative nightclubs where bouncers were deployed to protect the establishment. According to the state, accused too, Jerome Boyson, was concerned that Colin Boyson, his brother, was allied to alleged underworld boss Nafiz Modak and Pakistani national Wasim Chaudhry. And while he could not kill his brother, he would act against Modak and Chaudhry. The fear was that the breakaway group consisting of Modak and Colin Boyson started taking over the security at entertainment venues and clubs, perceived to be the turf of the older grouping. They needed to act and act decisively under Mark Luffman's instructions with the help of the 27 gang to intimidate businesses to turn away the new group. The state says accused 7 to 13 are members of the 27 gang. At least three people involved in this case have already been killed. The accused have all pleaded not guilty to the charges against them. Accused one, Mark Liffman, says he had nothing to do with the murder of steroid king Brian Weinstein in Constantia in August 2017. Mark Liffman and Jerome Buisson were both arrested in December 2020, three years after the death of Brian Weinstein. However, they were soon freed after posting a bail of 100,000 rands. According to the state, between April and November 2017, the group was part of a notorious criminal organization that unlawfully, knowingly, and willfully assisted and abetted criminal activities, together with the 27's number gang. These criminal activities had allegedly taken place in areas such as in Seapoint, Camps Bay, Crawfontaine, Platycliffe, Mitchell's Plain and Constantia. One of the individuals who was part of this criminal organization and who was also accused of the murder of Brian Weinstein was a man named Williams Red Stevens. Stevens was said to be the general of the 27's numbers gang. However, before he could attend court, Stevens was shot. According to court papers, Sheldon Breed, who was already serving a 20-year prison sentence for his role in the murder of Brian Weinstein, allegedly assisted Brian with his illegal steroid selling business. He claimed that Mark Liffman and Brian Weinstein were fighting over investments and property deals. Three months before Brian was killed, Liffman was heard in a cell phone conversation, talking with 27's gang member, Naidu Krischer, discussing a plan to murder Brian, with Naidu requesting Liffman to pay for the assassination up front. Following this discussion, Liffman and Naidu had another conversation, this time involving Naidu and Jerome Brison. In this conversation, the plot to kill Weinstein was also discussed. On the 29th of June, 2017, the state alleges that Jerome Buisson arranged for a group of illegal steroid dealers to meet at his home in Cape Town. In that meeting, the dealers complained to Buisson that Brian Weinstein was a threat to them and their businesses. It was also in that meeting that Buisson agreed that Brian would be taken care of. However, before the assassination of Brian, there was an attempt on the life of suspected gang boss, Ralph Stanfield, who was shot multiple times in the city of Johannesburg on the 6th of July, 2017. Ralph Stanfield is alleged to be the leader of the 28's numbers gang. He is currently facing a number of criminal charges, including murder, at the Winburg Magistrates Court in Cape Town. The attempt on Ralph Stanfield's life occurred because of his close association with Brian Weinstein. After trying to murder Stanfield, Buisson and Liffman held another meeting, where again they discussed ways to take out Brian. At that meeting, the two allegedly came to an agreement to murder Brian, and they also agreed on the sum of money to be paid for the murder. Liffman indicated that he was not willing to pay more than 250,000 rands because he had paid 500,000 rands for the hit on Ralph Stanfield, which was unsuccessful. 
leading up to the murder of Brian Weinstein, Sheldon Breit, and his brother Matthew Breit, assisted by Jerome Buisson and Naidu, in turn did reconnaissance at Brian's home in Constantia, and also at his businesses, to facilitate the planning of the murder. Breed and Naidu asked for the help of William Red Stevens and other members of the 27's number gang to execute the murder. One of the many charges relating to attempted murder that Mark Liffman faces is that in November 2017, he told gang members to go out and murder alleged kingpin Nafiz Madak and Colin Buisson, the blood brother of Jerome Buisson. Nafiz Madak is currently facing over 100 charges at the Western Cape High Court. One of the charges he is facing includes the murder of the great Charles Kinnear, an anti-gang unit detective who was shot and killed outside his home in Bishop Lavis, Cape Town, on the 18th of September 2020. According to court papers, Jerome Buisson and Mark Liffman had made three attempts to murder Nafiz Madak. The attempt to take out Madak allegedly stemmed from the competition he posed to a group consisting of Liffman, Jerome Buisson, and Colin Buisson, who controlled Cape Town's nightclub and entertainment security industry. This deadly war between these individuals had allegedly started in 2016, when Liffman, Jerome Buisson, and Colin Buisson created a criminal organization. They called themselves the Brotherhood. At that time, the Brotherhood established themselves as the dominant group in control of the lucrative nightclub and bouncer industry in Cape Town. On the 26th of May 2019, during a meeting that the Brotherhood was having at the Coco Nightclub in Cape Town, it is alleged that Colin Buisson and Kishore Naidu, an associate of Liffman, got into a fight, during which guns were pulled out. This fight was because, Colin Buisson allegedly complained about bringing members of the 27's numbers gang, including Williams Red Stevens, to the club, and he blamed the problem on his brother Jerome. At the end of 2016, the state claims that there was ongoing infighting within the Brotherhood, after Colin Buisson accused his brother Jerome of stealing from him. In November 2016, a man named Andre Nod was tasked with negotiating Colin's departure from the group, which was completed at the end of November 2016. After this happened, a new group which was led by Madak and Colin, then violently took over security at Cape Town entertainment venues and nightclubs that had been controlled by the Brotherhood. After the November split, a meeting was allegedly held at Williams Red Stevens House, where Jerome Buisson, Mark Liffman, and also members of the 27's number gang, were present. The meeting discussed Liffman's desire to take the clubs back by force and intimidation, and they all agreed to participate. William Red Stevens indicated that he will provide enough gang members to fill at least three or four minibus taxis, and that he will provide them with guns, which will be transported in other vehicles. It is alleged that Naidu then invited Stevens to attend another meeting at the home of Colin Buisson to confirm the arrangements. In that meeting, it's alleged that Liffman explained that he needed at least 100 to 200 men and that the work should be done over two days as soon as possible. Liffman stressed that they needed to be extremely aggressive and intimidating. As of 2024, Mark Liffman and Jerome Buisson's trial has already started for their role in the murder of Brian Weinstein. Mark Liffman is currently facing 9 counts, and Jerome Buisson is facing 11 counts. They have both pleaded not guilty to all the charges against them, including the murder of Brian Weinstein. On the 15th of April, 2024, Mark Liffman and Jerome Buisson appeared at the Western Cape High Court. Their trial was one of two high-profile cases that was being heard at the court that day. The other trial involved Nafiz Madak and 14 of his friends. They were accused of the murder of the great Lieutenant Colonel, Charles Kinnear.